The Kutusich is Chelek Yutes. We're back into a new Chelek. Chelek Yutes, the Varim Gimel. Lilo Nishmas Rabbi Yosef Ben Yamin Ben Rabbi Nasha Kaltman. A very, very Gishmak Esicha. Explaining a Rashi in a very practical, balabatish, logical way. It connects with a Yenish Shaltaira. Deep Chsidis that is so beautifully consistent with Pshutei Shal Mikra and, this, and the Medrish, the way we understand the Pasek, let us jump right in. Fun Pasek, Hashem, Alekeha, Veseichem, Yesef, Aleichem, Kochem, Elof, Pa'amim. Yibarech, Eschem, Cheshedib, Alechem, the Pasek in the beginning, towards the beginning of the Parsha, where Meshav Inu gives the Yidna Bracha, the Eivishter should multiply you, the Eivishter should increase you, a thou, a, a, your numbers, a thousandfold, and he should bench you, he should bless you as he has spoken to you, so from these words, as Rashi Maitik Diverta Yosef Aleichem Kachem Alef Amim, he quotes the words: May Hashem increase you, multiply you a thousandfold. Unis Mefarish Ma'u Shu Vivarech Eschem Kashadibu Lachem, and he asks a question: If he already said Yosef Aleichem Kachem Alef Amim, maybe I should increase you a thousandfold. What is he adding on to that? And he should bench you as he spoke to you. Make sure he just gave a bracha. Ella. Now she explains as follows, Amru Loi, they said to him, Moshe, or as he says in the Ha'ara, Moshe Rabbeinu, Ata Neisen Kitzvah Lebir Chaseinu, you're placing a cap on our bracha. Kvar Iftiach HaKadosh Baruch Hu Es Avraham, Asherim Yuchalish Lim Neis V'Gaymar, the Eivishter already promised Avraham that you will not be able to count us. The Pasuk says, V'Samti Ezerach HaKafar Haaretz, I will make your children as the dust of the earth. If someone could count the, the number of the dust on the earth, your children will be counted. And Rashi over there in Breshis, in Lach Lecha, explains that just like you can't count the dust of the earth, so too you can't count, you will not be able to count Avram's children. So this sounds like an infinite amount. And then you go and say a thousand, which is a, which is a finite number. Omar Lehem, so Misha responds to them, Zu Mishali. He, this is my bracha. This is what I can give you from my own. When the pasuk continues, it means that Hashem is going to give you even more than what I promised you. He's going to give you what He promised you. Now, the mocker from the Pirish Rashi is from Sifri and Medrash. The mocker for this is in the Sifri and in the Medrash. This is Sifri on this pasuk and Medrash Rabba Dvarim Rabba. In Sifri state, and this is the quote from the Sifri. Omruloi, they said to him, Rabbeinu Moshe, our Rebbe Moshe, EFC Lonu Shat Varchenu, we don't we don't want you to, to bench us. God Varchyufti Echas Avraham Avinu, have Hashem already made a promise to Avraham Avinu. Omar, he said, we basically is Arachak Kechavishim Ayim, I'll multiply your children, your offspring, like the stars in the heavens. Visamti is Arachak Kafar Ares, now make your children to be as plentiful as the dust of the earth. The Atanois and Kitzvah Berchaseinu, and you are giving a cap, a limit to our bracha. So the Moshe answers them with a mashal a melech a mashal which will be brought up later in the sicha. But in short, the king hired someone to manage the assets that 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 uh, so that his child his his young child should not waste the money away. Then when the kid gets older, the the king gives everything to the to the uh, to, to to his son. So, so similarly, Amr Lehem Moshe Le Yisrael. Moshe says to Yidna Hashem Aleke Aviseichem Yisrael Aleichem Elo Kachem Elaf Amim Zumi Shali Yesh Lachem. When Moshe says the Eibusher should multiply you a thousandfold, that's what I was given to be able to give to you. Yivarech Eschem Kashdiru Lachem, and then the Eibusher will bench you as he spoke to you. Kechel Yamim like the sand of the sea. And like the plants on the earth, which includes Afara Ora, it's the dust of the earth. And like the fish in the sea. And the stars of the heavens. That is the quantity that you'll get from the Abishter. Because once I can give you whatever I can give you, says Moshe Rabbeinu, then the Abishter will give you so much more. The Medrizak to the Medrizak is very similar. Kach Amru Lo Yisrael Yidin said to Moshe Rabbeinu Moshe Hakadosh Baruch Hu Lo Nasan Kitzvah LeBerchesenu The Eibush did not give a limit to our brachos. Vato Amarta Elafam and you said a thousand times 
Omer lehem ashe berachti as chemish li berachti. What I gave the bracha I gave you was from my own that which I could give you. Kishe yovei akadus baruch when the abister comes yivarech es chem kashdiv lechem he will bench you as he has already promised to you. And the mashal has the the medrash has a different mashal, which is not really mentioned in the sicha at all, and so we're gonna. We're going to stay away. We're not going to bring it up here. But the, the Medrish and the Sifri are both uh, uh, explaining this taina that the Yidin had on the Ebishter and Moshe Rabbeinu and Moshe's response to them. So as we would learn on the surface, at first glance, what is Rashi coming to tell us over here? The Eichin Sifri and Medrish, similar to the Sifri and the Medrish, is the taina for Yidin given the Yidin had a complaint. The bracha for the Eibush is b'li kisva. The Eibush's bracha is infinite. As Eden will not be misper on agvul. The Eden will be will be count. The number of Eden will be without a limit. Parvos ben zei Moshe mita bracha kachem elafamim. Parvos ata kisva agvul. Why is Moshe giving them a bracha that has a limit and has a cap? That's seemingly the the the, the complaint that the Eden have on Moshe Rabbeinu, and that's the question on Moshe. Moshe, why are you giving them a limited bracha? If the Abishter gave them an unlimited bracha. However, if this is the if this is the meaning of if this is what's bothering Rashi, if this is the question that Rashi is coming to, to explain, we're going to have four questions. The fees is over to move on. According to this, it's not understood. Ali Farvos is Rashi Mishan Unhaipta Midr Sha'il Sha'ila. Aifin Kefala Brachi Pasik. I'm going to rephrase the intro. If Rashi is the, is coming to take just the same thing as the Sifri and the Medrash, that the, that the Yidin were complaining that Moshe was giving them a limited bracha, why does Rashi change from the way the Sifri and the Medrash introduce their uh, their pirush, their explanation? And Rashi says, "Mahu shuv v'varacheschem unheipta mitabrach neshaylef and kefal abrachim impasik mahu shuv v'varacheschem mekashti v'lachem." And Rashi starts with asking, why in the Pasuk is there a double bracha? Why does it say a eschem after Moshe's bracha? And why does Rashi not go straight to explain the complaint that the Yidin had on Moshe Rabbeinu? Ubifrat, as it says, Nid Darke shal Rashi bipirushay, so ois taich in the Shredekat and Pasuk, especially since it's not Rashi's style, to explain to us the difficulty in the Pasuk. Rashi doesn't usually... Uh, tell us what's bothering him. Rashi usually goes straight to tell us the meaning of the Pasik, and we have to figure out what's bothering Rashi. Many a Rashi Sikha, the Rebbe explains to us that we would have thought that what's bothering Rashi is one thing. And if you look deeper into the Rashi, you'll realize that something else is bothering Rashi. But it's always our job to figure out what's bothering Rashi. Why over here does Rashi tell us the question? So number one, he's different than the Medrash. And number two, he's changing his style and he's introducing the question. Base, the second question is really a continuation of the first question. Even if there wasn't a question, why did it say, You still have to introduce the explanation of the Sifri that Moshe said, This is my bracha, and the Abish is going to give you a bigger bracha or a different bracha. Because otherwise, there's a contradiction between, between Moshe's bracha and the Abish's bracha. So again, why does Rashi, not only is the question that Rashi is changing from the Medrash, and Rashi is changing his style, we don't even need that question. Just for the question of the Sifri would have been enough to introduce the Sifri's explanation that there was a dialogue between the Yidin and Meshach Rabbeinu. So why do we have to go to Ma'ushuv? Why did Rashi change from the Medrash, from the, from the Sifri? Why did Rashi change his style? And what is it necessary for? We still have to get to the Zumi Shali, to the Pirus of the Sifri, or the Pirus of Rashi, as he says it, because we have a different question. There is a stira between Moshe's uh, bracha and the Abish's bracha. Gimel. Then we have another question. Why does Rashi bring a proof to the Abish's bracha that it's unlimited? From the Pasuk, Hashem Yuchal Yishlim, that, that, that Yidin cannot be counted, just like the sand, the dust, cannot be counted. Nitvi in Sifri, was the raya ved gebrach man ascholos avtocha, v'samti azaracha kafara ores. Unlike the Sifri, where the Sifri brings the beginning of that Pasuk. 
not the end. Asher miyuchel is limnais, but the beginning. We samti zarachan kafar aritz. Nais something vir basi zarachan kechavesh maim. In the sifri, first he brings the pasuk vir basi that I'm going to multiply you like the stars of the heavens. Then he brings another raya. We samti zarachan kafar aritz, but he doesn't go to the end. Asher miyuchel is limnais. He starts from the beginning of the pasuk. We samti zarachan kafar aritz because that's the beginning of the pasuk. And yet Rashi jumps to the end of the pasuk. Does not mention kechavesh kechavesh maim, but and and when he mentions afar aritz, he only mentions the second half of the pasuk. Asher im yuchalish limnos. What is unique about that part of the pasuk that Rashi finds uh, the need to bring that part? Dalit. Fourth question. We bother Rashi about nor the minyan hakitzva. Since Rashi is coming to address at this point, whether you understand it, even uf as we said in the previous page. We're looking at Rashi at the surface. What's Rashi trying to accomplish? To try to address the the the, the fact that Moshe's bracha is limited fun elaf pa'amim only up to a thousand times. Why does Rashi include in his quote from the pasuk, which we know as the Dibur Hamaschil? Why does he include the words Yosef Aleichem Kachem? Cheni should said elaf pa'amim. Elaf pa'amim is a kitzva. It's a limit. He should have said, Why is there a limit? Or Ma'u Shuvi Baruch Hashem? And he should have explained. That Moshe said, this is my bracha, and this is the bracha from the Ebishter that's unlimited. But why include Yesu Aleichem Kachem? Base. In Sif Base, we can ask another question. Like more of a, of a general question, but a very important question. The question is going to be, what is Moshe's bracha? If Hashem is giving an unlimited bracha, what's Moshe adding to that? Whatever Moshe is giving is already included in the Ebishter's bracha. We have to understand that this is the primary question. And this is the question that many of the Mepharshim ask. What is Moshe Rabbeinu's bracha adding? The bracha of an elephant is not nichlul and bottled in the bracha of the mebish nasha dibur lachem. The bracha of elephant, the bracha of a thousand times, is included and almost insignificant in the bracha of the abish there, which is as he promised. But his bligvul the kitzlo stevish his bracha is unlimited. If the, we know the famous rule that there's within 200, it is, is included the 100, then for sure in an in unlimited bracha is included the, lim, the limited bracha of a thousand. So what's Moshe even saying? Now that the Major says, Zumi Shali, I'm giving you my bracha, the is going to give his bracha, which implies that there's two brachas, one from Moshe, one from the Abishter. What do you need Moshe's bracha for? What is it giving more than what the Abishter is already giving? Now, Mepharshim fell in the Kasha. So the, many Mepharshim discussed this. And there's two, two, two answers that we're going to bring here in the Sikha. From the Mepharshim. Aleph, Bircha, Sekhaz, Baruch, Hu, Sabbundin, Mitten, Tnai. That the bracha of the Eibishter is dependent on a condition. Un zikumt norven idin zan mekayim teiru mitzvahs. And is brought and is given only when the idin fulfill teiru mitzvahs. Masheikim, Birchas, Moshe is nit op hengik in King Tnai. However, Moshe's bracha is not dependent on any condition. Other base birchas meishe is chal bezman azeh, um birchas akar zvaruch of azayin lasid lavei. Or another differentiation is that meishe's bracha is applicable even in today's day and age, and Abish's bracha is only applicable lasid lavei after the coming of Mashiach. So therefore, this there is meishe meishe is a different bracha than Abish there because it's in two different times or under two different conditions. However, these tirutzim will only work, will only fit according to the Sifri and the Medrash. And he's going to explain this. Here's the Moshal from the Sifri. There was a king that had a lot of wealth, a lot of assets. He had a young child. And the king had to go overseas to travel away. Omar, he said, If I leave all of my assets in the possession, in the hands of my son, who he's going to waste it. He's a child. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hire an executor until the, be, until the son becomes older. When the son got older, he came to the, to the executor and he said, I want more. Omar, lay. So Amar Loi, so the executor says, Kol Everything I gave you until now, I gave you what, what, what I was able to give you. But that which your father left for you is being saved for you. In other words, now that you're older, there's much more that it was that was set aside for you. 
Was the is verstandig. So from this we see. As the Brache von Eberstein is not in the same man, and in the same man with the Matze of Ben, when it comes to the Brache of Apetrupa Moshe. In the Moshel, it's two time periods. One is when the child is younger, one is when the child is older. It's also in two different states, uh, conditions of the son. One is immature, and one is mature. So similarly in the Nimshel, the, 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 the Brache of, Mo, of Moshe, who is the Apotrupa, the executor, and the Brache of the Eibishter are being given in two different times. When I say, say moving from Lashna Medrash, similarly we can understand, you can derive from the Medrash, in the Moshel, in the Moshel it says, Kisha Yovei HaMelech, when the king will come, and in the Nimshel the Medrash uses the term, when the Eibishter will come, it's clearly uh, could be understood that it's two different times. There is before the Abishter comes and after the Abishter comes, before the king is there, after the king is there. So that works in the Sifri and the Medrash to say that there's two time periods. One is for Birchas Moshe, and one is for Birchas Akadish Baruch. Oh, but in Pirish Rashi was in the Faris Pshutish Mikra, but according to Rashi, which Rashi is explaining the Pshutish Mikra, the basic understanding, the literal understanding, when Ezak Stam Zumi Shali Avul Yibarachas Kam Kashri Yibarachas Kam Rashi says simply, this is my bracha, and the Abishter is going to give you his bracha. Un is a feeling, it beram is a feeling from the Abishter, and the Abishter doesn't even hint to the one of these above mentioned explanations, either that this is before in Galos and this is in Geula, or this is when Yidna doing mitzvahs and Yidna or Chasham not doing mitzvahs. Is moving as the Asbar Pshutu Pesa late Pirish Rashi. So Rashi after the film is Menamizan. If Rashi doesn't hint to it, it means because Rashi sees a much much simpler explanation, one that is so simple and understood within the words of the pasuk that it does not need something for to be hinted in the words of Rashi. So the question is of Siv Beis, what is Moshe's bracha? What is Moshe adding to the Abishter's bracha that is not already included within the Abishter's bracha? So these are our questions. Number one, why does Rashi introduce uh, a different question than the Medrash? And Bechla and Sifriya Medrash. And Bechla, Rashi is changing his style. Especially since the question that Rashi doesn't mention is still an actual question. There's a study between Moshe and, and uh, Moshe's Baruch and Levi's Baruch. No, uh, number three, why does Rashi use the Pasuk Asher im Yuchal Ish Limnois? Not the Samti Zaracha Kafara Oretz. Number four, why does Rashi include the words Yesev Aleichem Kochem in his Dibra Maschil? And number five, why does, what is Moshe Rabbeinu's Bracha? So we're going to start Sif Gimbal Dabir Bazah and we're going to start understanding more about Moshe's Bracha, more about the Abish's Bracha, and we're going to see how they are not a contradiction according to Rashi. The Bir Bazah. If you look at it, and truthfully, even if you look at it from the perspective of Drush, is King Kashit it. It's not a question why Moshe is limiting his bracha to a thousand times. But when the Abishter's bracha was that there'll be no number and no cap, no limit to their number. But a human being as great, as spiritual, as holy as he might be, is still a limited, a finite human being. And in the next paragraph, he's going to uh, uh, use an, an example how time, time can never be infinite because it's made up of finite units. It's, uh, uh, it, it's interesting to note, as it is explained in the Sfarim of Chakira, of philosophy, from finite items, you cannot collect enough to create infinite. In other words, if you have an uh, incredible number of finite items, because the items themselves are finite, therefore they will always be uh, 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 in a finite number. An example that is brought in this forum is from time. Can it sign on a the, the, con the continuation of time cannot be infinite. Since time is made up of units, of hours, of days, of, of, of minutes, then each minute has to be infinite. When, you, when I'm in this moment, the continuation of this moment doesn't have an end. And then when I'm in this hour, the continuation of this hour is infinite. But then a minute is a smaller infinite than, a, than, than an hour. Then you're saying basically that an hour is a bigger infinite than a minute. In the, in, in the, uh, in the original Sikha, in the, in the, in the Bilti Muga, the Rebbe said that 
when you stood at Mount which was 2,448 years into creation, then that was the size of the current time. If you say that that is infinite, and then you say the time that we're in now is infinite, then that is a 2,448 uh, 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 year infinite. This is a 5,782 year infinite. So th this period and that period are, is different sizes, and you're saying they're both infinite. And it's impossible, it is incongruous to say that one unlimited, one infinite is greater or bigger than another infinite. Look it up over there, we're not going to uh, discuss it here. The Nikuda that he's taking from this example is that once you have a finite unit, you cannot make infinite out of finite. You cannot say, oh, I'm going to bring in so many that, that there's going to be an infinite number of them. Because since th they themselves are finite, then as many as you're going to bring, you're still going to be a, within a finite number. So therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu, who is a finite human being, ca cannot give an infinite bracha. It has to be a finite bracha. It has to be something that is, that is tangible. A thousand times. So we understand now why Moshe didn't go bleakful. How about the Ebishter's bracha? And Sif Dawud is going to explain, explain to us that the Abish's Baracha is not either bleakful. It's huge, but not bleakful. Bechlau, Bepashto, Zerat, Sechem, Sifri, Yon, Medrish, Nit vegen bleakful mamish, nor vegen amisper God will be yoiser. Bepashto, we're going to say that in the Sifri, the Medrish, for sure, according to Rashi, which Rashi is Pshutish Omikra, when it says in the Posik that they, like the stars, like the sand, it doesn't mean literally infinite, that there is no number. It just means it's a huge number. The quantity is incredible. The bracha from Abish and Verbeisi is Zerachah Kechechel Yashamayim Vesam Tzerachah Kafar Oretz. Need their money to came. When Abish gives us a bracha that we should be like the stars and like the the dust of the earth, without saying a number, without mentioning a number, made as a villain zayin and as a ribui muflog, as a zam mispers gosher to tzelim. It's going to be in such a vast quantity that it's impossible or gar shver, almost very, very difficult to count. So it doesn't mean that it's literally infinite. It just means that it's an incredible, vast quantity. And to prove this, for example, when the Abishter promises to Avram Avinu, the sand that is on the seashore, and the Sifri also uses this expression, the sand of the seas. It has a number. In other words, if it was possible, you can count. You can't count, but there is a number to the amount of grains of, of, of sand that exist. There is a number. You know, sometimes you'll figure it out. If you count, if every square inch has a million grains of sand, you count how many square inches there are, how many square feet there are. In other words, there is a number to the grains of sand. But it's such a vast quantity that it doesn't get counted. Nobody does it. Nobody is going to go. You're going to gather all the people in the whole world. It says in the of 25, if you take all the people from when the world was created to count the stars, you won't be able to. Because there's just, there's just that many. But there is a number. The Abish there knows the number. And we are compelled to say this by Yasef Bar, Yasef gathered so much produce, like the sand of the sea, so, so such quantity, until they stopped counting because there was no number. It's obvious that the amount of produce that Yasef gathered to, to, to feed the, the, the people for the seven years, and Nasad Besecha, he placed it in the storage houses. It, obviously, there was a limited amount. There was, however many storehouses there were, there was a number. Noras is so. Why did it say kechel ayam? Noras is given in big vul. It was sorry. Noras is given by ribu muflag. It was such a vast quantity. When the farchad the lisper hasoy fer lisper, the counters stopped counting. Ki ein mispar fun di mispar. But say there's nothing. There were no numbers left, so to speak. You know, there's a billion, there's a trillion. I looked it up online. There's a, a, a sextillion, octillion, a, a sicilian, or something like that. There are, there are numbers, but at a certain point, the numbers stop. There's no more numbers left. So, 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 and Nashi with this says, it wasn't Yasef that was counting. If they had hired, if they had hired people, counters, you know, bean counters, people to count, then, uh, then, then they, they'd run out of numbers. There was that much. 
But it doesn't mean that there was no number. It doesn't mean that there was an infinite amount. It's obvious because it fit into space. So, so um, from this we understand that even when the Torah says, mm-hmm. the Torah does not mean an infinite number. The Torah means a vast quantity. Ribuy muflok is the word, w- w- words we're going to be using again and again in the Sikha. And thus is the again the time. Thus is given late in Sifri and Medrash the time of summation. I love Amim. Time of summation. And this, according to the Sifri and Medrash, this this was the problem with the time of Moshe Rabbeinu. With the bracha of Moshe Rabbeinu. I love Amim is kitzvah the birchaseinu. It is magbul zeir bracha. It is a sach a klener at soul. We the rebbe should have gezakt. I love Amim itself. You're giving us much less than the Abishta promised us. The Abishta promised us such a vast quantity, and you're giving us a, 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 a small quantity, Allah Pamim. That is the Taina, according to the Sephirin of the Manish. Oh, but is, is, is the Sintas Akash. However, this question, if this is the question, according to the Sephirin of the Medrash, obviously Moshe has to be Mugbul. The Abishta is not Bligvul, but nevertheless, there is a huge gap. Between Moshe's bracha and the Abishta's bracha, that the Abishta is offering them so much less than the, 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 the Abishta. If that's the problem, that's not a question of Sutis Mikra. And we're going to elaborate on this in Sifhe at length, but in, in, in short, in a nutshell, the Rebbe explains, well, Ella Farmer from the Mispir from Eden Damos is a Ribi Muflik Biyosef. Because a thousand times of the number of Yidden at that time, to multiply the yidden a thousandfold is already an incredible number. As he's going to explain in the next if. So, the, so therefore, to say that Alpip Sudish Al Mikra, the yidden were complaining that the bracha wasn't big enough, that the Abisha is giving them much more than Moshe Rabbeinu, that doesn't make sense because the Abisha was also giving them an incredible amount. And this is why Rashi does not begin his, his Pirush with the Omrulai, with the Taina of the Yidin, the way it is in the Sifri and the Madrish, because according to Rashi, that's not a Taina. However, when you look in the Pasik, there's another question. Why is there another Bracha? This compels Rashi to bring down the Pirush of the Sifri and the Madrish that there was a complaint of the Yidin. Not because the numbers don't add up, but because we see that there's two brachas in the Pasuk. Therefore, there must be two, two, two layers to the bracha. And therefore, Rashi brings in the, the Sifri. We're going to elaborate on this and see if hey, um, and Vav. In Sifhe mostly. Um, but just oh, here we already have the Nekuda. The Nekuda is that according to the Sifri and the Medrash, there's a stira. Hashem is giving a lot, Moshe is giving a little. According to the Rashi, that's not a question, Moshe is also giving a lot. And therefore, the only reason that Rashi has to bring in this, this dialogue, this complaint of the Yidin, is because of the Pasik, Vivarech Eschem, and not because of that the, 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 there's a stira between the two between the two brachas, and let's elaborate on this very gishmak. Sifay, Eden zayin adam al given shishim ribu agvarim bnei yasidim at shishim. Eden at that time were six hundred thousand approximately uh, males between the ages of twenty and sixty. Shana, the two kum two gvarim al bnei chaf. Then you have the adults that were younger than twenty. Un lemalim shishim and the adults that were older than sixty. Un nashim v'taf and then you had women and children. That the cheshbon zayin the chalapach chaserum tzvei million. The number has to count at least, uh, has to add up to at least two million people. Um, if you count uh, 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 that for each for each um, uh, a man between twenty and sixty, there was one woman, a wife, and w- even just one child. You're already talking about three times six hundred thousand, which is two point, uh, uh, um, which is one point eight um, um, a million. And then you if you count the the, the seniors that were over sixty, uh, you're, you're 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 basically about two million. Especially if there were more children. That's if you count one child per per, per person, per, per adult. But if you count uh, two, three children, you're going to be at even much more than two million. Elif Amim, Der Mispar. Now, if you multiply that number by a thousand, that Zain Be'erech Tzvei Billion. You're talking about approximately two billion people. 
is in Psuti Shal Mikra. If you look at it from the perspective of the child of the Melchamish Shal Mikra, Leitzichnit, it's not logical. I'm going to love them, Kumim et Atayne, Hayitachin has ain't folk, Tzilt Nord Tzvei Bilyon. That you come to Atayne Moshe Rabbeinu, it's not fair that one, only one nation should be two billion people. If you're talking about a bunch of nations, fine. But you're talking about one people, Liyid. To come to Moshe Rabbeinu and say, it's not fair, you're giving us a thousand fold, which is two billion. It's not enough. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not sensible that, that this should be their taina. Much more than that. It's common when you say a thousand times, you don't mean exactly a thousand. But the person says, I told you a thousand times. It doesn't mean a, a thousand, it means a lot. It means many times over. Which in that case, it could be even more than a thousand. Which means that it wasn't talking about two billion, it could be three billion. When Isaiah came and Eichel found us, I'm a pastor of the Divinity Moshe. That's how you can explain what Moshe said a thousand times. He didn't mean exactly a thousand. He meant many, many, many times over, and it could be even more than two billion. Ubi frat, especially, and here he's going to say that we can't compare the number. We can't literally compare the number of Yidden to Keichle Yashemayim Chachel Yashasvas Yom because it's never going to add up. The bifrat as the ribu from Eden was kinzayin apnei ayevasha the quantity the 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 multiples the 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 the, the uh, great quantity of Eden that can possibly exist on the face of this earth in the dry land is the chnita ribu v'keichle keichle ashemayim when afar aretz achel ayam cannot be the same quantity as the stars and the dust and the sand but the shetach ayevasha from kader aretz atamid misiyamas because the the space of dry land on the planet Earth has a specific measurement, has a limited measurement. Shita alfi parsi have alma, as the Gemara brings, that the world is 6,000 parsa. A person takes it four amas. It's actually interesting that in the original Sikha, in the Bilti Muga, it says one amma per person. But halachically, a person is four amas. So you could do the math. If, if, you have 6,000 parsa, and there's four mil in a parsa. So you're talking about 24,000 mil. And there's 2,000 amas in a mil. So 24,000 times 2,000 is 48 million. So there's 48 million amas on the face of this earth. Now, if you, if you divide that by four amas per person, then you're talking 12 million. If you're giving it one amma per person, that's 48 million. But it's still a number. Especially since there, there, there is and there always will be other nations, animals, but in homes, so the Sukram and fields and vineyards of Hulu. It doesn't really matter so much how much the whole, how big the whole world is, because where do the Yud belong? In Eretz Yisrael. Either stack edit that's it's true that it's called the land uh, of the deer. And Rashi over there explains that just like the deer's skin stretches very tightly, so too Eretz Yisrael can stretch to contain many more people than would than, than you, you would think. But it's still a limited space within the, 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 the dry land of planet Earth. Is the chumuvan as the mispar people mentioned as canons of kefirin in the mshetach kader aritz? So it's obvious that the number of people that could possibly be on planet Earth is a sach klener from the meribu imufluk from afar aritz uchel ayam. It's much less than the vast quantity of the dust of the earth, of the sand of the sea ubefrat al tozam, and especially earlier that ever brought in the haora that according to some opinions you're supposed to count them together. It's not the sand of the sea or the, the stars of the of the uh, heavens. It's the sand of the sea and the stars of the heaven. And the number the Abishta is promising is both together, all three or all four together, which is an even greater number that is way beyond the number of people that could actually fit on planet Earth. So therefore, in Pshute Shal Mikra, the Eibishter's bracha has to be smaller. And Moshe's bracha has to be, Moshe's bracha is big. So therefore, they, they don't contradict. The quantity that the Eibishter is talking about can't be real. Because we just said it, 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 it wouldn't fit. 
So therefore, it has to be a euphemism. It has to be a borrowed term. It can't literally be like in, in those numbers. And, and, and on the other side, on the other hand, could be even more than a thousand. So the numbers are close to each other. Obviously, the Abishas Bracha is bigger, but it's not that much bigger. So therefore, according to Pshadus Amikra, we're not going to say that the Yidden came to say to Meishu Rabbeinu, your bracha is not fair, your bracha is much smaller to the Abishas. Just because of the numbers. If it was just the numbers alone, then we wouldn't say that the Yidden came to Taina. But since there is a second bracha seemingly in this parsha, in this pasik, this compels Rashi to say that there was a complaint and Moshe responded to them. Therefore, Rashi says it must be that Moshe they complained that there was a there was a cap, a, a limit to the bracha. So ultimately, there was a taina, but it's not a, a, an understandable taina just based on the numbers. It's uh, it, it, the, the fact that there was a taina in Pesudis Shalmikra is learned from Vivarech Eschem Kereshti Berlachem, and that's what Rashi says. Ma'u Shu Vivarech Eschem to clarify that this that the two brachas are not really a stira to each other. Moshe's bracha is much bigger than you think it is, and David's bracha is not as big as you think it is. But nevertheless, still the Yidden complained, uh, and Moshe told them Zumi Shali, etc., which we're gonna do, which we're going to get to in Siv Zion. So we answered our first two questions. Why does it say Vivara Cheskam Kashdi Belachem? Why, why does Rashi start Ma'u Shu Vivara Cheskam? Why does Rashi start with that? And the explanation is, is that according to the Safri and the Medrash, there's a stira between Meshes Barach and Nebuchadnezzar Barach. Nebuchadnezzar Barach is much, much bigger than Meshes Barach. And therefore, the Yidna had a complaint. Why are you giving us such a, a much smaller Barach? But that's not a question according to, according to Rashi. Because Meshes Barach is huge. And Nebuchadnezzar Barach is not as big as it seems that it is. And therefore, the only reason that Rashi has to bring in this union of of of, 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 of the complaint of the Yidin is because of the fact that the Pasik says that Rashi has to explain this question because otherwise you would think that the problem is the stira between the two brachas. Why does Rashi bring the Pasik Asherim Yuchalish Limnis? Sivav. Rashi explains that just like you cannot count the dust of the earth, so too your children, your offspring will not be counted. So this we understand that the Abish's bracha was not that they will number, that their number will be as many as the dust of the earth. Nor as me pnei har ribui muflog velen ze nit ketzelt veren punkt vi afar vert nit ketzelt. It, what 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 the pasuk was saying is that they will be of a of a of a vast quantity, just like afara orets cannot be counted, so too they will not be counted. But not that they're going to be the same number; they're just going to be similar to each other in the fact that they, neither of them could be counted. And there, so what was their question? Because we just gave a whole explanation in CFA that there's no stira between Nebuchadnezzar Baruch and Meishas Baruch. So in that case, what was their complaint? The fact that Tzadik Baruch Eschem compels us to say that there was a complaint. What was the complaint? The complaint was... That if the Abister said, I'm going to give you a number that's not counted, it's not normal to count, why is Moshe putting a number on it? So M is Taka, it's not like the, uh, the, the, the gap between them is that big, but still, it looks bad. It doesn't look uh, as good. Here you're saying, it'll be, it's not countable. Here you're saying, here's the number. Even though it means... An incredible amount of the Ungvigret Fias, it came in and that Guzma, a filo marvial upon Kacha, and we said before it could be an exaggerated thousand, which means even more than a thousand. He's as far as an Indian from Kitzva, but it's still a limit, still a cap. They're being counted and they're being measured according to relative to the number that they were then. So you, 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 you're creating a relative number. That was, that, that, that was their time. 
And again, he's going to chazer over in the next two paragraphs the difference between the Sefri and the Medrash. Thus is the chilek says in Sefri Medrash and Pirish Rashi. Late in Sefri Medrash, the time to Meishat and Eitzin Kisel Rebbe Chaseinu as Meishat Zakta Sacha Klenet in Mispor before Eden as well as Zayin legabi the Meribui Mufluk from the Meibishnas Bracha. The time is that according to the Sefri Medrash, the time of the Eden was that they were getting a much smaller number in comparison to the vast quantity that would be Kichech Lechshvayim Kichafara Oritz. And as we know, according to the Medrash, we're not limiting Kichech Lechshvayim Kichafara Oritz. It means literally uh, 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 like those numbers. Whereas the Rebbe break that free and free free at the Mishpat to take a pasuk. We're basically as Arachah Kechech Le'ashemayim. Therefore, this free brings first a pasuk from Parshas Toldos about Kechech Le'ashemayim before bringing the pasuk Afara Oretz from Lech Lecha. So we virus and as Echter pasuk with something Arachah Kafara Oretz. Make me does I need to be moving shabbos. To explain to us that we mean the Rebbe Mufla, we don't mean Asher Im Yuchal Ishlim Nois, that it just means that you can't be counted, like this can't be counted. It means it's going to be the vast quantity, like Kech Veshemayim. And a Gafar Oretz also means a vast quantity. And this is a different Taich than Nashi's Taichi. Which, as we said before, according to Rashi, it just means that you can't count it. It's, it, 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 it's, it's more than a person would count. But according to the Medrash, it's a Rebbe Muflog. It's a vast quantity. So the Yidin are tining. You're giving us so much less. There is a stir, a contradiction, because the, the Moshe's Bracha and the Avis's Bracha are so far from each other. But according to Rashi, it's not about the quantity. The Dosva says, Zaktav Zaya Mispar. Rather, the time is, why is there even a number on it? If the Abish had said, there'll be no, there'll be no number. Therefore, he does not bring these tzukim of kechle yashamayim who kafara oritz, which is possible to be counted. Then the pasuk asher yuchalish limnois. Rather, he brings the pasuk asher yuchalish limnois, which the emphasis of that pasuk is that we're not even counting to begin with. I do want to point out that when I learned the sikha the first few times, to be it seemed that Rashi was much bigger. No number is bigger than a number. But it, 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 it became clear from the initial Torah, and then when I went back here, I, I, I went to it again and again and again I, to, 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 to be able to fit it into the words. It became clear that the Sifri, according to Sifri in the Medrash, the, the, the size of the Abishas Baracha is much bigger than the size of the Abishas, uh, uh, of the, of the Abishas Baracha according to Rashi. In other words, according to Rashi, there's no study between the two brachas. Uh, if not for the fact that uh, it says, because the Abish's bracha is not that big, and Moshe's bracha is not, is, is not that small. And therefore, when it says no mispar, it means that it's, it's so many that, 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 that no one's going to count it. But according to the Medrash, the bracha is means like the quantity of which is so much bigger than, the, the, than just saying there's no number. It, no number runs out at a certain at a, at a, at a certain at a few trillion, whatever it is. Especially if you accumulate them all together, is such a vast number that it's way beyond. And therefore, the bracha of the Abishter, according to the Medrash, is much bigger. Which is why, according to the Medrash, there's a stira between Mesha and the Abishter. But according to Rashi, there's no stira between the Mesha and the Abishter, which is why. Because their because their brachas are closer together, and therefore the question is only why are you giving a number if the Abishter said there's no number. And the proof to this in Tzutus Mikra is not from the actual bracha, but from the fact that it says, Vivara Chesim Kashdi Vodacha. So we've answered another question. We've answered the questions why Rashi says, Ma'u Shu Vivara Chesim. Why Rashi introduces a different question in the Sifri and the Medrash. And the answer is because according to Rashi, according to Tzutus Mikra, the Sifri's question is not a question. We also answered why Rashi uses the Pasuk Hashem Yuchalish Limnitz, because Rashi wants to emphasize that we're talking about the bracha of the Abishter is. Something that doesn't, that, that can't, that, that is not ragil tzutzel and it's not uh, normally counted, but it's not as big as keichli hashemayim v'chachel hashasasayam, literally in numbers. We still have a question: Why does Rashi include the words yesh aleichem kachem in the dibra maschil? And then we ask the major question: What is even Moshe's bracha if the Eibush is giving them so much more? Even if you say it's not ligvul, but still, if the Eibush is giving them a much bigger bracha, then what's Moshe, what's Moshe even giving them? And here is going to say something. Uh, beautiful. It's so simple that it is. It's mind blowing. Siv Zayin. Avdem Yemeshes Enfer Zumi Shali. This is my bracha. Avul Hu Yevarachas and Karshu Yevarachem. The Eibush is going to give you a bracha as he spoke. So until now we understood that Moshe was going to give his bracha and the Eibush is going to give a different bracha. 
So the Rebbe explains the bracha of Asaykit is Oich Yisrael Hashem. Moshe's bracha is also coming from Hashem. The bracha of Asaykit is the bracha that Rebbe, bracha Rebbe is giving. The bald over the bracha is Misheli Erzokta. Since I'm saying it, says Moshe Rabbeinu, where the bracha from them Gizen of Melech is Akmeta Kitzva. It has to be seen and therefore said with some sort of limitation because Moshe is a person. When the Ebrister implements the bracha of Moshe Rabbeinu, it's going to be Kasher Dibur Lechem as he spoke, the bracha of Mekuyim Veren. Vid the Ebrister bench Kasher Dibur Lechem as Asher Yuchal Yishlimnois. And the Ebrister implements the bracha. So it's not that Moshe Rabbeinu is giving a bracha and the Ebrister gives a different bracha. Moshe is giving a bracha that the Ebrister should give a bracha. And the Ebrister does give that bracha. And when the Ebrister fulfills the bracha, it's much more than Moshe said. Moshe says a limited amount because Moshe is a mugbul. Moshe is a human being, so he has to put it in the words of, of this world. So he has to give a number to it. But, he, but, but he, within that bracha, he's saying that when the Abister fulfills the bracha, it's going to be much more than I even said. It's just I have to say it within something. There has to be some sort of, of, of worldly frame uh, work for my words. But I don't mean it should stop at that. I mean that the Abister should implement that bracha with, by giving much, even, much more than I even asked for. So it's not any more a question, what's Moshe adding? He's not. Moshe is introducing the Abister's bracha. I'm giving you a bracha that Abister should multiply you a thousand times. But when he fulfills that bracha, it's going to be even much more than I said. Because the Abister is not limited to this world. This concept that Moshe is giving a much bigger bracha than he's actually saying. It's just that the way he expresses it is in a limited way, is also understood in the Mlashon Yesu Aleichem Kachem, is understood from the words Yesu Aleichem Kachem, which is why Rashi includes it in his Dibra Maschil. Since Moshe is a human being, Moshe is limited to a specific time and to a specific space. He can't remove himself from the limited, from the limitation. From the mishpar Eden kachem, was the the Egin, from the number of Yidin that he sees in front of his eyes right at this moment. And therefore, on bench say, Zayim bracha is Yisraelichem kachem. He benches them. You should multiply to what the number you are now, relative to what you are now, because Moshe is a mugbul, so he sees the Yidin as they are now, so his bracha is not only going elef pa'amim, but it's also kachem. It's also relative to the number of Yidin right now. But the is totally not limited. The Abishter could see the Yidin in the future as they will be way beyond where they are now. And therefore there's no relative number, there's no number at all. It's as if to say, it's to say that it's a number that can't be counted. Because the Abishter is not limited to Meshach Rabbeinu, to, 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 to this world, and to the limits that Meshach Rabbeinu has. And, and therefore, in the words, you see from the fact that it says that Meshach is a mugbo. And that Amosha is benching Lefi Erech now. And therefore also when he says Elef Pa'amim, is also Lefi Erech, Lefi Erech for right now. But the Bracha of the Ebishter is much, when the Ebishter fulfills the Bracha, it's much, much greater. Rabbi Debruskin in his Shir gave an example of, when the Rebbe gives a dollar to a Yid. It's a dollar, is just a dollar, it's a, it's, it's, it's a Mugbul. But within that dollar, within that 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 gift is is it contains an ein seif bracha an infinite bracha that comes to this person it's it, it, it's mugbul it's it, it's it's being given in a dollar but it contains an infinite bracha so it's just a, 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 a in our own mind to see a concept where the 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 the, the, the bracha seems to be mugbul but really it's ein seif dugma avalei mamish the davar here's a dugma the rebbe's example even though it's not, not, not a perfect muscle, but it's a muscle. The Aser is a Dibir, the Rebbe said, Gesagt zu di Eden, Bedibir Echad. Und the Nach is an Ech given, die selbe Aser is a Dibir, it's called Dibur, Vidibur, Bifne Atzme. The Rebbe said all the Aser is a Dibir in one shot. In one Dibur, it contained all the Aser is a Dibir. And then Moshe repeated them one Dibur at a time. The reason the Rebbe brings this dogma is to bring out the concept that the same Bracha could be, could look Mugbul. When Moshe gives it, and could be bleagul when the Abishter gives it, or less mugbo when the Abishter gives it, like the Aseris Adibris. When the Abishter gave the same Dibris to the same Yidin, 
It was bli gvul. It was all the words and contained in one dibur. One dibra. When Moshe Rabbeinu said it over, it was limited one dibra at a time. Even though it was the same dibris. But when Moshe repeats the, the dibris of the Ebishter, it comes out sounding different. Because Moshe is a mukbul and the Yidin are a mukbul and they're in this mukbul dika world. The Ebishter is not limited to this world and therefore he can do the same, give the same dibris, but in an unlimited way. Now we go to the Yenish Shaltero. So we answered all of our questions. Why does he say yes? Because he wants to prove this concept that Moshe is mugbul to Makam is Mama Suyim, and therefore his bracha it sounds mugbul, but really it's yes of Hashem Aleichem Kachem. The Eibushter is going to give this bracha, and when he does, it's going to be Varachas and Kashtiv Lachem. And and we are now understand what Moshe's bracha is not adding anything to the Eibushter. Moshe Rabbeinu's bracha is introducing the Eibushter's bracha, so to speak. It is explained in the writings of the Arizal, which in the year that the Sikha was said, it was Mitzoy Shabbos, was Hayav. Um, this year it's a Tuesday of Parshas Dvarim. Very often Hayav falls out in Parshas Dvarim. In the Maimon Arnav, so the Kisvi Arizal explains this, this statement of Mesha, Ad Khan Mishali, Mikan Ve'elech Varachas, Mikan Shadib Lachem, up until here is my bracha. And beyond this is the Avish's bracha. So the, the Kisvi Arizal explains like this, Kimesha Big Matriya Kel Shakai. The name Mesha, which is 345, is the Gimatriya of the words Kel Shakai. When the AC is on Malay, when you fill out the letters, Kaze, Aleph, Lamid, Shin, Dalid, Yud, Im, Hakoilo. So, firstly, you have to spell out each of the letters. Aleph is Aleph, Lamid, Pei. Lamid is Lamid, Mem, Dalid. Shin is Shin, Yud, Nun. Dalid is Dalid, Lamid, Sof. And Yud is Yud, Vav, Dalid. And then you have a Koilo, you have one more number that is the uh, inclusive of, of, of all the letters. Yalu, Begimati, Aleph, it'll add up to 1000. The Yu, Aleph, Shel, Bina. And in Kabbalah, it is explained that the number 1000. It goes with Bina. There's Aleph, Chachma, Aleph, Chabina. There's an Aleph, there's a thousand, which is Chachma, there's a thousand, which is Bina. Um, so you have the, the first thousand is Bina. And Koyach of Moshe is given Ad Ima. Koyach of Moshe reaches until the mother, which the mother is Bina. And Chachma, Bina, Chachma is, is, is Ava, Abba, Ve'ema. So Chachma is the Abba, uh, the father, and Bina is the mother which together give birth to the Midas, which are the children. So the Moshe could reach till a thousand, which is until Ima, until uh, Ema, until Bina. For the Chaim Bechem Ba'al Apam, and therefore Moshe gives them a thousand, a thousand times, because, because a thousand is Bina, that's how far Moshe can go. This is how far I can go, because since Moshe reaches until Bina, therefore Moshe can give a bracha of a thousand, which is Bina. From here and on, I give you the bracha of uh, Abisha gives you the bracha for, that comes from Chachma Ilam. So you have Moshe is Bina, and the, and the Abisha's bracha is Chachma. Now, Oichindem Zatman di Has Alma from Pshutish Shalmikra with Pnimi Satayra. Here too, you're going to see how Pshutish Shalmikra fits in with Pnimi Satayra. Vishnema di Asbara Baza. The Aini from Bli Kitzva, Vidas is the Pirisha Safri Va Medrish. The unlimited numbers, as it is according to the Safri in the Medrish. Chacha does not need bli misper bepoel, nor bash Allah canal, even though it doesn't mean totally infinite, but it's it, but it's it's a euphemism, it's a borrowed term. Is aber der inyan von ein misper afilu behash Allah vi bal the state in teiras emes an inyan amiti. Since the teiras says no number, even though we're saying that practically it doesn't mean that literally, but nevertheless it still has to be true because the teiras is true. The says that dos was bezok as eden on zanke gech vi ashmaim kafara order to chila yom aribu was lay yisaf amedayf. When we say the eden will be like the stars of the heavens, like the dust of the earth, like the sand of the seas, which is such an incredible number that it cannot be counted, is as val bishar shei nem tzichter lay yisafer from bli mispar amiti. Is because in its source and its root, the shaydish, the root of the number of eden comes from a place that actually there is taka no number. Narvi, that's very timshech ba'elam, but says mugbul kum to set up be'efish ali suffer me rov. The way it comes out into this world is it can't be counted because it's so many, but it, but, but it has a number. But the shaydish of it is in a place where there's taka no number. It's taka bligvul. Thus, haste the agbalu misper in dem was eden zan gechich v'yashemaim kafar arz gechilayam. The limitation, 
the number that Yidin are only like the stars of the heavens, etc. is not truly inherent because of who they are. It's only because they came down into this world, which is a limited world. Therefore, there has to be a, a limitation to their numbers. But in truth, in, 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 in the deepest, most levels, in their ultimate source above, they are actually without any number at all. So according to the Sifri and the Medrash, we will understand now. The fact that the Yidin are infinite, that there is such a great quantity, that they are like the stars of the heavens, etc., etc., that originates from the bligvul of above, from the infiniteness above. But, and, the, and the number, with the limited number, which could be counted, which in this case would be similar to the Moshe Rabbeinu, which gave a number. That shayde, the shayde of that is once it comes down into Seder Ishtal into the into Atzilus, which is already part of Seder Ishtal and therefore there is, it is in the parameters of Gvul. So you have the Abishas Baracha, which comes from Bligvul, and therefore it reflects down here in Asher Le Yisafer Meiroiv. And you have the, the, the Meisher Inus Baracha, which comes from Gvul, and therefore it, 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 it reflects itself, it's reflected down here within a number within a Gvul. But that's not Yatsudi Shomikra. Here you're saying Bligvul and Gvul. But. I mentioned earlier, and I, 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 I think I had a hard time with this at first, but I think I got it now, that according to Rashi, the numbers are smaller. The Ebi says, Bracha is smaller, according to Rashi, than it is, according to Rashi, than it is in, in, uh, in, according to the Medrash. So even when you look at it from Rashi's perspective, where the bracha of the Ebister is smaller, there's still going to be a difference between Meshach's bracha and Ebister's bracha, which is why they didn't fart to have a complaint. I wrote an elephant. Either as herzich di hagbala u misper shebahem, birchas Meshach, either according to Meshach, you can uh, 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 feel, you can recognize the limitation that, that, that's there, Other, or the hagbala herzich nitan. You don't feel, you don't recognize the limitation, which is how it would be in the bracha of the Eibister. Since everything originates lemaila, is understand because there's shadows when it's vein on lemaila is from asamad regev. Voice is da keli, kli atzile. Do is da keli with atzilis. And so according to Rashi, uh, according to Rashi's approach, we, when you look at it from Yenet Shel there is Kalim, there is Gvul, except there's a difference, which we're going to explain in a moment, the Kalim, or it's a Herzich Nishton. Do you feel the Kalim aspect of it, or do you not? And that's going to reflect itself down here, if you say that there's no Kalim, that you don't feel the Kalim, then it's going to come down into this world in... Uh, a, in a higher number, in a higher way, more of a believable. And if you could feel the kalim, if you could recognize the, the, the agbala of the kalim, then the way it comes down will be will be will be more numbered. Just before we go to the to the next paragraph, Mashaiki, just to understand the contrast, Mashaiki made a shade is between the Sahel Mile Kalim, since when Herb was in the talking Kalim, but if you're gonna go back to where there's no Kalim, Vert from them Nimsha Echl Mata and from Bli Mispar, Lifiara Khailam, A Ribi Khechla Shanka of our order to Khaila Yam. If you're coming from a place of to of no kalim, kalim, then even when it comes down into this world, it's going to be the number of the medrash, which is a ribi muflak. But if you're talking about that the shayrish is in esesvidus datzilus, it's in gvul, it's just that the kalim are not are not felt, then it will come down into this world in a way where where um um. It's a, it's, a, it's a large number, but not as large as if it was coming from Bligvul. The Chilich says in the Tzvei Efanimi, what would be the difference? See, Seher Tzich on the Rinyan HaKelem, and there's Seher Tzich Nita. 
So you, you, the, the, the Rashi pr- approach within Yenish Shaltera is that you're in Gvul, you're in Atzilus already. Uh, it's just that are the Kalim felt or are they not felt? And we're going to say in the next paragraph, I'm just, I just, I, I'm just uh, I'm going to introduce it, that in Atzilus, it's Iu v'chaye yichad, Iu v'gamay yichad. That the Kalim are not felt. The Kalim are one with the Eidus. The Kalim are totally bottled to the Eidus. Mashengi, once you go into Bria, the Kalim are, 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 are not as bottled to the Eir. Therefore, the Kalim are, are become an independent existence. And therefore, if the mucker is in Atsilis, where the Kalim are bottled to the Eir, then it comes down the way the Abishter's Bracha is, according to Rashi. Asher la Yisafer Meiroiv. That it is a very, very large number that no one's going to count. If it comes from Bria, then it's going to uh, be um, a more Mugbuldik account, which is Birchas Moshe, which puts that in the number of Elof Pa'amim. So now the Yenus Shal is consistent with Pesutish Mikra. Because according to Rashi, Moshe's Bracha is, uh, is Elof Pa'amim, and there's a Mispar on it. And uh, the Ebishter's Bracha says there's no Mispar. And according to Yenish Shaltera, Meshach's Bracha is, is, is uh, Bina, like we said before for the Kisvi Ar- Arizel. And the Ebishter's Bracha is Chachma, which means they're both within Eses Fidis, that Silis, or with, well, both within the Seder Ishtar It's just the difference is, is it uh, where the Kalim are felt, which is in Bina, in, in Bria, or where the Kalim are not felt, which is in uh, a Chachma. Let's see it inside. Please come to us. We have to call this Baruch Hu Leitin Pirushat Sefiyah Medrash. Is the Pachinus Akasev was talking Kelim. According to the Sefiyah in the Medrash, the Ebrus Baruch is Kichech Veshmaim Vechachilos Yes Tassayam, which is a vast number of Ribui Muflag, as it's been called in the Sicha. This is coming from Keser, which is higher than say the Rish Talshulos, where there's no Kelim at all, and therefore the Ribui, that Muflag that comes down, is Shulei Lefiyerach. But according to Rashi, the Ebrus Baruch Hu Leitin Pirushat Sefiyah is Chachma. But according to Rashi, the Ebrus Baruch Hu is is still somewhat limited, and therefore it's coming from Chachma. But certain than Dok Kelim. No, they had a zikniton. They had a bottle to mer. They are kalim there, but the kalim are not felt. They're totally bottled to the oil. But the fire from chachma bechalal oichli kalim so angerof and chayoyi eiris, which is why chachma is generally called chayoyi, which refers to the eiris. Chayoyi is the eiris, garmoyi is the kalim, but chachma is usually called chayoyi because the kalim are totally bottled. Um birchas moisha, vus herzich on der inyan agbalo misper is mechines bina, but dart dart herzich on der inyan akli and moisha's chachma. Whether moisha's bracha, whether you're coming from the perspective of the medrash, whether you're coming from the perspective of Rashi, moisha's bracha is smaller than the Abish's bracha. It has a number l of pa'amim. That's because it's coming from bina, like the kisvei arizal said, and therefore bina is is, is bria. Which is where the kalim are felt, and therefore the the, the shayrus is already uh, already at the beginning of gvul. Therefore, it comes down into this world into a mispar, into an actual number. Durcher limud in teira, in beide in the beide ifanim pshat ubechlal niglu teira was anyani bechlal says mispar shem teira. Now the rabbi says like this that pshat niglu teira is called the gvul of teira. The number in, within Tater. Pnim is a Tater, 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 which is the Tater of the Ardizal. Must be the Ardizal, Gazak, Tafke, Bedeta, Selah, Rene, Mutter, Mitzvah, Legalis, Esachach, Mandel, Ardizal said that in these last generations, it is permissible and is actually a mitzvah to reveal this wisdom. Um, must be made in this Gals, Vater, Sachsidis, and this was in our days re- reflected and, and, and revealed in the teachings of Chassidus, that it could even be learned more, we, it's, it's even more understandable than it was in the times of the Ardizal. Chassidus, Chabad. Most of all, is that ain't such a betayer. How can I get the mispar? Which nickel? Which nickel the tayer? Pnim is a tayer. Tayer is our rizal. Chesedus chabad is the ain't safe of tayer. When you learn pshat and pshat, it's this nickel the tayer. Pshut is all mikra and yein is all tayer. Chesedus together, when an anefim from tayer achas and in a way that it's the same tayer, it's one tayer, all consistent together. But when zeich is ein to his man from v'hoya mispar ben Yisrael gamer. Asher lo yimad v'lo yisafer, will reach a time that the taker there'll be a number. V'hoya mispar ben Yisrael. Asher limad v'lo yisafer. This is the dvarim dalid. Dvarim dalid. The next sichin in the kutas sichas, which is the second sicha that we're learning this week, is also stelz on the same pasuk, like I mentioned in the beginning of the shir that this this shir, this sicha is on the likut. Is a hemshach to the likut of of that year, which was the which was printed in Dvarim Dalad in the Kutasikis, which is it says Vaya Misper, on the one hand there's a number, 
Hashem lo yimad v'lo yisafer, but it can't be it can't be counted. You have legal and both together. But it's not lost love, which is going to be lost love, because of mamish.